Hello and welcome back. Now, today we're going to talk about AFK Journey again, which for those of you that don't know, is the sequel of the previous game called AFK Arena. Now, this is not just a sequel, it's a full-fledged RPG with beautiful graphics and intricate gameplay, and on top of a big, beautiful open world for you to explore. Now, AFK Journey is coming out officially on March 27 for mobile, iOS, Android, and as well as PC. I am currently playing on PC, as you can see. Now, the PC client, you will be able to download it on the official website, And but the game is coming out and it's going to have cross-platform, so you will be able to play with everybody, all of your friends, no matter where they are. Now, when the game comes out, there's going to be a lot of giveaways. We're going to get a lot of uh, uh, new things, including... 40 plus heroes of different quality including epic heroes which is really good for new players because that way the new players are going to be able to tackle all the di different difficulties uh, way easier because they have a big roster to start right so this is really good also on top of that there's going to be a seven day login campaign and if you log for all the seven days you will be getting 200 pulls for free so that's huge now in this video, I'm going to talk about the biggest tips that I can give to new players so that way you can start in the best way possible and enjoy the game without having too many regrets. Oh, I wish I did this, I wish I did that, okay? So, without further ado, let's begin and thank you FK Journey for sponsoring the video. So, let's begin. The way I'm going to do this is I'm going to go through all of the different mechanics of the of the game, different modes, different mechanics, different parts of the game that needs to need to be addressed and I'm going to give you my tips to correctly understand and properly tackle some certain decision that you might be faced uh, when you're playing the game. Now, some of these modes will not be necessarily available on the start because the some, most of the modes in the game will be gradually unlocked the more you increase your AFK level. And we yes, we will talk about the AFK level as well. And so the first, the first thing that I want to address is, uh, let's just start, is the Mystical Collection, okay? So the Mystical Collection can be found by clicking on the Mystical House at here at the bottom you go top you go click mystical collection and this is probably the most neglected thing that i feel like new players will encounter because you gradually forget about it you tend to for you can you tend to forget about it so uh, but this is really important right so what is the mystical collection the mystic collection is a uh, passive way of increasing your afk uh, power so what does that mean when you are playing the game you will be uh, increasing your level with the afk progress here right this is your level and you will be getting a certain amount of resources by default with your team fighting at a certain level if you battle you will increase your and you win you will increase your level by one which means that all of your resources get higher and higher and higher and there are certain thresholds that you have to uh, surpass to unlock different modes now that's not the correct uh, that's not the, the point that i want to talk about but this is important to specify because the mystic collection directly increases and empowers the uh, resource generation that you get from the afk level so as you can see here you have a bonus overview that tells you what are you getting right now you're getting afk rewards increase and you're getting arena increase you're getting dream realm increase you're getting daily quest privilege increase and how do you level up those those are leveled up by leveling up the single pieces of the mystic collection annihilation blade the covenant letter the victorious helm each of those represent a different part of the game and by doing their achievements that they tell you what to do you will unlock the next tier and the next tier comes with the next version the empowered version of whatever they will they were giving you so for example if you reach red on the annihilation bay blade it tracks your global character party level so if you have it's called resonance so if you have a resonance level of 80 you will unlock daily afk essence earned plus four if you do a level six you will unlock daily afk xp earned plus forty thousand. so by doing this and by following what it tells you to do these little challenges that will take time obviously but this way you will be able to get better uh, 
bonuses on different aspects of the game. Now, that was the Mystic Collection. And you can just go here and check, like, Covenant Letter does this. You need to pull a certain amount of times. Neverending Book is for the, the daily stuff. And this is, like, Dreamland. It's about the Dreamland mode. We're going to talk about it, of course. Victorious Helm is probably from the arena. Yeah, it'll reach certain theaters of the arena. You get more stuff. You get more refreshes. It's actually pretty important. And that's why I want to introduce and start the video by talking about it because it's very important and most people forget about it because you don't really see it all the time. Uh, gradually, by doing the challenges, you will eventually find out what it is but I'm, I'm stressing it right now so that way you will be able to uh, check it all the time and see like what you need to do to increase certain aspects of the game. Speaking of AFK battle, let's go ahead and progress with the second point. The second tip is about the AFK progress. You really want to level up this level here. I am at level 315. The main reason is not just because of the higher generation for the AFK, for the materials, but also... In mainly uh, because some of these levels are threshold for different unlocks in the map and in game for example there are certain modes that you can get and uh, unlock by reaching certain threshold certain levels of your afk stage for example dream realm arcane labyrinth legend trials and battle drills will gradually unlock by you progressing the AFK stage, level 100, level 110, level 200 and something, level 70, level 50, there are certain thresholds where you, uh, when you do that, you will unlock the different content, and you want to do that as soon as possible, as quickly as possible, because those are time timed modes, right? Like, for example, this boss ends in five hours, and it's different boss every day, and you can get those materials during the, the boss life and then it goes away and there's another boss with different materials, right? So you want to uh, tackle on this content as soon as you can before it resets and every time it resets you're basically losing materials. So you want to unlock them as soon as possible, okay? These are also battle drills are for the guilds. We're going to talk about it in, in uh, later on in the video. So what you want to do, first of all, increase your AFK stage as soon as possible. Also, in the map, you will encounter this Miasma encounter, which is a fight against some enemies. And to fight them, you need to, to reach a certain AFK stage. In this case, for me, for example, 350. And it will unlock the Dark Forest Part 7. Now, how do you, how do you progress your level? You progress your level by winning the battle, right, for the next level. So battle, for example, you click the battle and you will present, be presented with a fight. And if you win this fight, you will unlock the next one. Now, if you are super powerful and you don't want to do it yourself, you could do auto battle, right? You could do auto battle and set everything automatic. So they con constantly uh, attempt the next fight. If you win, you continue and it will stop automatically when you can't win anymore. Okay. Or when the auto play can't win anymore. But... That said, don't be discouraged too much because it's really easy to turn the tides of the combat of, of a battle that you are losing by switching out and using different units because there are in this game combat is very intricate and it's very it's, it's very strategic. So by changing out different characters, you can literally turn a loss into a win. So keep that in mind when progressing this. So this was uh, the AFK progress and it's really, really important to do. Now let's go ahead and talk about the Dream Realm, which is one of the, what I would call the daily routine of AFK Journey, something that you want to do or you want to check every day, okay? This is a boss fight and you will unlock it, as I said, at a certain point of the AFK, a certain AFK stage, you will unlock it, you want to unlock it as soon as possible because it's a boss fight and it's a different boss every day. They have different, different uh, reward that you can do by killing them or getting them to a certain HP threshold. But the important things to do is to challenge the boss regardless, okay? So if you challenge the boss, you will be ranked a certain way. You will be able to eventually kill it. And when you kill it, even though the rewards are one time, every time you kill it, a new version of the boss comes in, comes in with a new fresh batch of rewards again. So you could keep killing it. It's harder and harder, obviously. So at a certain point, you might want to wait a little bit. But it's important to tackle the boss every day so that you can 
get all of the rewards gradually and you're not missing out because every time they go away you're gonna have you're gonna have to wait a little bit until the they cycle through and you will see this boss again maybe in two or three days from now okay so if you want to know who to use you can check check here on the hot place you can click here and check what are the heroes that the game is um is recommending you to use and why and as of why you can also take your own uh, take your own judgment and use whatever you want by reading what the boss is going to do every boss is going to have their own mechanic and you really don't want to either rely on alts for this boss or stand all together for example because it's going to do a paddle it's going to do damage so you want at least one character to do be damaged and not everybody right so it's important to understand who are you fighting and why also it's important and the tip is uh fight this whatever the boss is at least once every day so you get these dream fragments now what do you do with these dream fragments you go here you click emporium and it will show you what you can do with those as you can see here those are copies of characters right so by getting enough points you will be able to buy a copy and as you might not know you need multiple copies to increase your character's power and it's very very easy to get copies as you can see this is very close i'm almost very close to buy a copy of whoever i want here those are all epic characters and the epic characters can go all the way to max rarity so you don't have to worry about that you just have to buy the copies and how do you buy the copies here from the dream store but with the with the dream fragments that you get by killing the boss so don't forget to do this it's really important now, another thing that you should be doing every day is the Legend Trial. Whenever you actually finally unlock it, because it is tied behind a certain level of the AFK stage, you will be able to do it and you should be doing it as soon as possible, as soon as you can, and every day. Why? Or at least attempt it every day. Because those are, you will, it will unlock four towers and each tower is for each different faction and you can only use the character of that faction to tackle on that that tower right so once you click on the tower itself you'll be you will be able to only use for example the nature characters and here we can go and select as you can see the others are going to be locked you will be able to fight and climb the floor now the higher you go the higher the rewards the cooler the, the better the rewards and the harder the fight is obviously so you can also check who are you going to fight what level they are and what are the rewards and what the what the faction is that you can use now you can also check on the records and see the other players how they did it and what level they were and stuff like that who did they use so that could help you a little bit but keep in mind that you want to do this every day or at least try to do it every day attempt it every day because as you can see those are not open every time like certain towers are open on a certain day uh, certain and open in different days so for example the tower of light it's open on monday friday and sunday with the tower of will which is uh, open on tuesday friday and sunday and these two are open today which is uh, saturday so you want to do this every day so don't forget about it and try to level everything up in your account because it will help you progress through the game now i wanted to talk about the gear crafting and why it is important to understand how it works okay and to do it properly you go here click equipment and now you click like whatever class you want to make a new gear a new gear piece for let's say tank right now you can craft by using these ingots and these ingots are made from dismantling the equipment the random equipment that you will end up getting from the afk stage once you were like crafting and even from the just being afk right though you could get some pieces you dismantle them and if they're purple you will get the purple ingot if they're blue you will get the blue ingot if they're yellow you get the yellow ingot i mean no no surprise there now it's important to check the max forging level the max forging level is basically the same as your average resonance level so if you have everybody level 100 the max forging level is going to be level 100 now why is this important to know first of all once you once you want to craft you need a certain amount of ingots so this is very expensive you want to uh, be careful on what you are making because the increase is not the same for every piece on top of that once you make a piece you can only craft five by five so you can craft a level 80 you can craft level 5, 85 90 95 100 etc so you want to be uh 
always aware on what your resonance is. Why? For example, I have a level 80 amulet here for my uh, for my for my tank. Now, my level 80, once I was a level 85 resonance, I could have made a new one. But why didn't I do that? Because if you know that you're going to increase your resonance level way higher than just five levels, you will you should wait and until you are at the top and then make the item because you should wait until you're level 90, 95 and then make the item that will now require a little more ingots, not that much, a little more, but now will give you much more stats, high, much higher stats than uh, what the level 85 would have given you. So it's important to chill, not always upgrade stuff, wait, can you reach the can you reach a higher resonance level? Yes, in that case, you can stop, wait, chill. The moment you get it, now you craft it. For example, now that I craft it, I can craft my... I can go from level 80 to level 100. And now the increase is very, really, really, really high compared to level 85, right? So that's why you, you want to wait and then do it after. It's very important, so keep that in mind so you don't waste too many uh, resources because getting those ingots is kind of... Uh, it's, it's very long to do, okay? So keep that in mind when you're when you're crafting new gear. Now let's talk about the open world map. Now in the map that you can see here, there's a lot of points of interest, a lot of uh, chests that you can tackle and get and open. There's uh, different icons that you can see on the map. Each icon represents something in the game. This is the uh, teleporter. The, those are uh, chests that you can open by killing the monsters that lock it. Uh, teleports are all modern, modern monsters, certain type of encounters like more strategic one, uh, protect the crystal, uh, special uh, puzzle, etc. Stuff like that. So now why do you care about this? You should care about this because of the exploration progress and obviously also just by clearing everything you will get the, the rewards from just the chest. Uh, themselves now if you go check on the for example dark forex my exploration is 34 percent now if you go check here it will tell you what are you missing how many things are you missing now it doesn't tell you if you click it doesn't tell you it doesn't necessarily point you towards what you didn't do you didn't get yet but you can preview the uh, gear and the things you will be unlocking by progressing through the exploration of the certain map. So if we go back on the Golden Witch, Witchshire, where I actually did 100%, and if you get everything you get, for example, 50k gold, you can get this uh, first initial blue entry-level pieces of gear that you will be using, will be needing uh, when you are doing, when you are in this map. And when you go, you can also not do it immediately and then go back. But keep it, keep in mind that you should probably do it because of the all of the diamond rewards you get. You will be getting a lot of diamonds every time you progress through certain threshold up until 100%. So the different zones will give you something and just the map itself progressing it will give you extra diamonds so it's important to uh come back or at least keep in mind you need to do it because you're going to get a lot of diamonds and useful resources now another thing that it's important to know is uh about the corrupted creatures. Now, what are the corrupted creatures? The corrupted creatures are a special encounter that it's multiplayer, right? So you click this and now you are facing against a big encounter. Now you can play alone, you need two players. So you click this, you team up with either your guild or you send a message in the world for someone to help you with, or you can also team up with your friends or your guild members, whoever you want. If you manage to find, when you manage to ma to find a, a partner, it's important to do this because of the rewards, okay? Every time you see some of these, you, you actually want to do them as quickly as possible because what they give you besides really high level and purple gear, which is going to help you a lot, on top of that, they also give you the soul stone shards, right? Now, the soul stone shard, after you have 60, it will give you a random S tier, which is an epic one, S tier character. It could be anyone, but it's it, it's nice to have because that could be uh, a character that you might need or a copy of a character that you might need. So once you go you go around, you go here, go around the world, they are, uh, you can spot them by that weird hand 
grasping hand that you can see, icon that you can see. So when you press M and you go around, you can check actually where they are. Like this one is here, for example, and you can go and check if you find other hands. Uh, there's another one here, for example, you can just go there, onset the auto path, and it will automatically run there from the nearest checkpoint. So this is important. Some Most of the time you tend to forget about it because you don't really know what that is, but it's important to do it as soon as possible. So that way you can get your reward immediately and have a little bit of an edge on the gear, for example, and on the your character roster, right? It's important. So keep in mind that they're there. And when you see them, if you have the opportunity to do it immediately, you should do it. Now I wanted to move on into something important about pulling, okay? So now in the Noble Tavern we can see this. We have different banners, we have the Rate Up Recruitment, the All Hero, which is the standard banner, which uses the normal envelope, and then we have the Epic Recruitment that uses the brown envelope. There's no way for you to get a brown envelope uh, by just converting the diamonds. You can convert the diamonds you need to get the envelope from somewhere and you can get them from various events, uh, login rewards, even if from the Emporium. That's not the problem. The problem that I want to stress today is, and it's a, one of the biggest tip of this video, is to be careful before you convert your diamonds into normal standard. You shouldn't do that and here's why. First of all, you might be tempted by the Emporium Guild Store. The Emporium Guild Store will give you a discounted pool, 30% daily pool standard every day. It's 30%, it's a little less, instead of being 300, it's 210. You can also have the monthly uh, discounted four brown pools. Those might be worth pulling, but in my opinion, you shouldn't get those at all for this reason. Once you go to the rate up recruitment, the only way for you to get the special recruitment envelope, which is called rate up invite letter, the only way is to convert your diamonds into those special pools. So you shouldn't waste your diamonds to the all hero recruitment of the or the epic recruitment without being sure of what you're doing because other, otherwise you will be missing out on your uh, premium character, your limited character. So in this case, it's Vala. If you want to pull on Vala, you should be saving your diamonds. Even if you don't want to pull for Vala and you're waiting for the next character, for the next uh, premium character that will uh, come in 23 days, for example, it says here, right? If even there, you should save your diamonds and not use them on the main, on the standard banner, because you will get a lot of normal envelopes from everywhere in the game, including the brown one, you will get them in certain events, in login rewards, so you don't really want to waste your diamonds there. On those characters, you can get for free just by playing the game. Instead, you should only use your diamonds in the rate up recruitment. So be careful, do not waste your characters and be sure where you're pulling. Now let's end with probably the biggest tip of the video, the combat. This is basically, it's not just a tip, it's a um, combination of uh, all the micro tips about the combat that I want you to understand. And by understanding and actually using them in combat, they will unironically carry you through the game, okay? So what you have to know, first of all, is knowledge. And let's go ahead and check the battle. No, what do I mean by knowledge? You need to know what your characters are doing, what's their kit, and how they want to be played in uh, in combat, okay? So if you know and you place everybody in the correct spot uh, or, or rearrange them or switch out different units, you will be able, unironically, to turn the tides and win a combat that was basically doomed to fail. You will be able to win it instead. Even if the enemy team is much stronger than you, you will still be able to win if you play your character correctly. Each character is completely different from the other, and they play in way different ways compared to the others or the enemy. So, depending who you are fighting, it's important to understand who are you using in your team? For example, what they want to do. Uh, let's assume you are you have a healer that you want to destroy on the enemy team. Now, Vala is going to target that healer, but if you move her around, you can switch the target, right? So you need to be able to move and check who she's marking, for example, and who are the enemies attacking. And you can do that by clicking on this one, on this uh, triple dot. It's going to bring up a bunch of uh, useful options. You can check who are we attacking, who are they attacking to us, who's focusing who. And if you bring, for example, two tanks out, we can do, we can do this and we can put like a 
two tanks now, right? So now you can see this, the uh, Lucius is not gonna die anymore because no, not everybody is focusing Lucius and he, he's gonna live and maybe will live until he does the ult, for example. If you remove this one, Lucius is gonna have the everyone jumping on him. So it's very important to know who are you switching and where, okay? So for example, Rainier is gonna switch one of our characters to the enemy into the enemy team so what do you want for example okay. this is just an example you could do something like this and switch them with the enemy let's assume there's a, there's a healer here okay we can start the combat i don't know if i'm going to win but just to show you you can start the combat and re what is rainier going to do is switch the enemy healer with your with your rogue that is now in the enemy lines immediately and it might have more chance to to kill the enemy right so keep that in mind this is going to help you a lot now we lose oh we're losing okay why are we losing try to understand who uh why are you losing and what's happening oh i need more dps bring a stronger character oh is uh, lucius dying immediately maybe we can bring two tanks instead right we can do oh, we can do this instead okay uh, are they getting aoe for 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 example then move spread them apart for example okay so we when, when we once we're doing the battle it's important to know what's the let's do times two what's the what's your what your characters are what they're doing what they want to do who are you focusing on and for example you could remove the autoplay of the ult and do it yourself why because if you do it yourself you're going to bullet mode when you're going to bullet mode you can check sometimes you can select what's the area when you want to do it okay so for example on tundra is about to, or lucius let's see who does it first lucius is about to do his, his shield now if we know what he's doing we know his shield to be somewhere right okay this guy is gonna die i want to shield those instead if you do the if you let the ai do it they might fuck up now we have Vala. Vala is about to let's attack this guy. Antandra, Antandra, do it, do your thing. Taunt Cecia. Spawn the spawn the enemy. Right? It's very important to understand. As you can see, I was about to die in the last attempt, and now by switching out my characters, I won. Okay? It's very important. And then you can also check the at the end the the review on who did what, like how much healing uh, how, what was done, how much damage was done, who did the most damage, who did the most healing, who did the most shielding. It's important to understand if there is a character that is lacking, is maybe not dealing that much damage, for example. At that point, you might want to switch them out. So I think that is important to know. And uh, by knowing this micro... Uh, micro tips is going to help you a lot progressing through the story and even when you seem like you've been uh, stuck for a long time just by switching the characters you will get a little more value and maybe you will win this time okay so I think that's it for this video I will be making more guides about the about the game all the different aspects that go a little more in depth in every single aspect of the game as well as tier list and other characters so stay tuned follow the channel subscribe leave a like do whatever you want leave a comment if you want if you requesting you want to request something so thank you again fk journey for sponsoring the video thank you for watching and see you next time